Derek here from In-Game Sound. Today we're going to be taking a look at a specific asset for a game. The game is an Arabian-styled game. I've done quite a few of them. They're popular. Um, the task at hand is to create a very upbeat, moving, pumping piece of music, somewhere around 130, 140 beats per minute. Uh, and I'm going to be going through the entire process of creating an intro, a loopable middle section, and an outro that can be seamlessly integrated with Wise into said video game. And I guess we're going to use some electric guitar for this today, so I'm happy about that. And there'll be virtual instruments involved as well. And I'll be doing some screen captures to kind of show how I'm getting all that stuff. Today we'll also be using some real instruments, and I'll probably dial up a Marshall stack just for this. Right now i got Guitar Rig running in Pro Tools because I like to put everything together in post, and I didn't really want that in my ear. Uh, but we're going to be swapping that out with an actual amplifier. I just don't want to deal with it right now while I'm trying to record a bunch of hiss. Sometimes I just use Guitar Rig because it's simple, but uh, when it's important, I don't. So what I'm going to do now is open a Pro Tools session, set up a grid at 140 beats a minute. I'm going to hunt through some of my drum loops and get just some basic time down there to work around. And then I'm going to open a virtual instrument track, throw a good drum plug in on it, and uh, pound away and program something in that's exactly what we're looking for for the particular style of music. All right, so we're going to do some playing along with some kind of patched in uh, drum loop stuff. There you go. Session drummers up. Okay, so now we've laid down a rough drum track. I'm going to take some time. I'm going to go quantize it, edit it, fix up all my mistakes, uh, mess around, get sounds, maybe add in an additional stuff just to, to spice it up. That's just the basic idea of getting something on a grid, and it's super important to have it on a grid for loopability. Um, when you're programming it, things need to absolutely be loopable. Uh, one shots and loops, that's all that really there is in game audio. So with that said, I'm off to edit that. I'll see you in about three hours. Okay, we're back from edit land. We've uh, edited up the drums, got them kind of grooving, made some sections, added some live percussion, tambourine, shakers, and we get this. Okay, let's move on to the big bad bass. Little E Phrygian mode, A harmonic minor, whatever you want to call it. Alright, so I've dialed up a couple of synth sounds and I'm going to lay down some parts with that. Uh, one of them is kind of a stringy thing. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, that kind of thing. Whatever. 
figure it out. The other one I want to lay down is uh, uh, likely going to be one of these kind of an oud. Very Egyptian. That type of thing. Right, we've got some keyboard parts down, some virtual instruments. We're using an oud or an oud. I'm not sure how to say it. And uh, some strings. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to be using a Marshall JCM 800. We've got it uh, kind of spanked down with this attenuator, the radial head load. It's an awesome device. It lets me record uh, the sound of this cabinet. Uh, basically, the head goes into that attenuator, which I sometimes, it also has an ISO out, which I can patch into my wet, dry, wet cabinets. But today I'm just going straight from the head into the head load into the cabinet, into a MG201 mic, a bear, killer uh, dynamic mic. And uh, yeah, that's the signal chain there, and we're going to double track it, so uh, widen it up a bit. We're not using any of this stuff at all. Man, uh, gets messy fast working in here. So we're going to throw down some uh, rhythm guitar. I'll likely double track this. Okay, we're starting to make sense of things. Um, if you saw some of my previous videos, I was talking about a MIDI guitar. Um, I did put down some oud. Oud, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that properly. It's probably oud. Um, and my chops on the piano kind of limited me, and I thought it needed a bit more, so I'm going to use the MIDI guitar for that. And glitchy sometimes but you clean the MIDI up Okay, so we got some cool parts down uh, with our virtual instruments and whatnot. Um, I often find that uh, they get kind of stale after a while, so I like to add some real instruments wherever I can. In this case, I don't have a lute, but I do have a mandolin, and I've tuned it down to some bizarre droney tuning, uh, a bunch of E's and very 50. Um, sometimes when I'm trying to add flavors into weird music, I'll ask myself, would Jimmy Page do it? If he'll do it once, I'll do it twice. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to double track this down-tuned droney mandolin in a few sections of this song. Alright, so we're going to go on another track now and we're going to pan them hard left and hard right to get some nice stereo imagery, little natural chorus, cover up some of the gross maltuning of this particular mandolin, um, just give it a little dimension and some reality. Try and stay tight on it and keep it simple.
Okay, so now we're going to throw down a lead guitar track. Probably not going to use a ton of it in the final mix. Uh, that's where we're going to start cutting out parts. We've kind of got things running all the way through, but we're going to start editing soon and get a final mix ready. Uh, we'll throw down one just to see what we come up with. We'll do a take and uh, we'll do some editing. We'll take the best and leave the rest. so we've thrown down a bunch of stuff um, I'm gonna go and edit that and uh, I tend to put down all kinds of parts and then take them away later uh, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it and it gives me the option of making all kinds of funky alternate files and mixes out of it so uh, that's one of the things in my workflow that I found beneficial is to play way more than you need and then take away most of it and have some stuff available that if you ever need for alternate purposes, then you have a bountiful supply. So now I'm going to go edit that down and mix it and put it into something that's more reasonable. Uh, I'm going to do some screen captures and demonstrate how to make the intro, the middle loop, and the outro. I'll be re-importing those assets back into a new Pro Tools session just to make 100% certain that everything loops properly as intended. Okay, so we've got a new Pro Tools session open and we've made sure to set the tempo to 140 beats per minute, which is the same tempo as the track. Uh, that way we can zoom into the sample and take a look at where the ends and beginnings intersect and make sure they're sample accurate for looping. Um, so we're gonna wanna make sure that we got all that in order. I've just got a one band EQ, a little bit of bottom stuff I wanted to get out. Um, also running a little bit of L3 multi-band. It's basically a multi-band limiter. Uh, we've set it to minus 0 0.2. That way, in case we ever turn it into MP3s, uh, it won't clip. They clip a little sooner than a PCM. Uh, not doing a lot of compression, not much at all. Just uh, kind of little protection stuff there. Not really a mastering job. It was kind of done on my mix bus. Um, uh, we'll give it a run through. There's the mix we ended up with. A uh, bunch of changes and uh, here we go.
Thanks for watching. Please uh, look in the description for any of the links below. There's lots more videos to come. Please subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell if you want to get notifications. And uh, our next video, we're going to be loading those assets into a Y session and programming them to behave. Thanks again. Thank <laughs> you.